Zell, aged 49, an executive assistant, consulted complaining of visual discomfort, involving redness, itching and a gritty sensation in the eyes. These symptoms were most obvious in the morning upon waking and at the end of the day. She was experiencing considerable sensitivity to light when using a screen and outside. She said the symptoms had been more noticeable over the past few months and were made worse by wearing a mask. Her work requires her to spend a long time working on a screen, around 7 or 8 hours per day. The interview did not reveal any relevant medical history or ongoing treatments. When questioned on risk factors for dry eye, the patient was found to be an active smoker, consuming around 10 cigarettes per day. The results of the eye examination were as follows, visual acuity was excellent and eye op normal. The OSDI questionnaire was used, giving a score of 43.75. The use of questionnaires such as the OSDI, DEEC 5 and SPEED is a useful addition to the interview and enables a rapid assessment of the severity and variety of symptoms experienced. They can be used to monitor dry eye syndrome progression and the effects of any treatments given. These tests are easy to use and can be filled in by patients in the waiting room. The clinical examination concluded with a slit lamp examination that revealed moderate meibomian gland dysfunction with incomplete blinking. The right eye had a breakup time of 5 seconds and the left eye of 4 seconds, with significant tear instability. The Lockri Diag Ocular Surface Analyzer performs four non-contact examinations based on the criteria detailed in the TFOSDUS-2 report. Interferometry showed disruption of the lipid layer, tear meniscus height was normal, non-invasive breakup time had dropped to 5.6 seconds, indicating tear instability. Mabography showed that some mabomian glands were dilated and blocked. A few glands were also atrophied. The patient was diagnosed with moderate meibomian gland dysfunction causing evaporative dry eye syndrome. To improve treatment compliance, the patient was informed of her condition and given an explanation of its physiopathology by means of a personalized information sheet. The patient was also directed to my dry eye disease website to provide her with more detailed information on dry eye. Preservative-free artificial tears were prescribed to the patient for installation several times a day. She was also advised to perform daily eye care, consisting of heating, massage and cleansing the eyelids. Blinking exercises were also explained to the patient. Finally, the patient was encouraged to stop smoking, because smoke has a harmful effect on the ocular surface. A two-month checkup appointment was scheduled. The patient was still experiencing discomfort. Her symptoms had reduced but were still present, despite good treatment compliance. Moderate Mabelmian gland dysfunction was still present at the physical examination. In light of this observation, C-STEM IPL treatment was scheduled, with the continuation of the symptomatic treatment. The treatment protocol comprised three sessions on day 0, day 15 and day 45. Four shots were performed per side per session at affluence of 8 to 14 joules per square centimeter. During the treatment, protective goggles were worn by everyone. At the end of each session, Mabum expression was performed using forceps, for optimal results. The heat generated by C-STEM IPL treatment makes it easier to express the Mabum by hand. Three months after the end of treatment, the patient reported a clear improvement in her symptoms, which was also evidenced by the OSDI test, OSDI of 43.75 on day 0 and OSDI of 25 three months after. An improvement in meibomian gland dysfunction from moderate to mild was also visible at the physical examination. However, symptomatic treatment will need to be continued over the long term, and retreatment with IPL will be scheduled if necessary.